I'm recording, so please go ahead. Okay, so I would like to uh, call the Town Services and Outreach Committee of the <clears throat> Council to order on September 26 at uh, four minutes after 10. And uh, I want to thank our members who are here um, for being present. We do have a quorum present. And so we're going to go ahead and start the meeting. Um, George Ryan is not available today, and uh, Hala Lord, um, will, Councilor Lord, will be joining us in a little bit, um, but um, we're going to go ahead and start. Uh, this meeting is being conducted uh, via remote means. Um, members of the public who are able to access uh, the meeting by Zoom and by telephone, um, and uh, We've made every effort to make sure that um, all members of the public can be um, permitted to participate in the meeting as appropriate um, and uh, can adequately access the meeting. Uh, this is a Zoom meeting, so it's um, not different from other members of the, from members of the committee. So having uh, said that, the other thing I would just note is that this meeting is being recorded for both audio and visual purposes. So people should be aware of that. And uh, I'll just check to make sure that the members of the committee can hear and be heard. Uh, Jennifer? Uh, yes, we can hear. Bob. Present. <clears throat> OK, so uh, there, that is taken care of. So um, the agenda uh, first item um, is uh, public comment. Um, are there any members of the public who would like to offer comment, they should raise their hand. And uh, we will uh, bring them in for offering comment. Seeing no request for public comment, then um, we will um, go forward to agenda item three. And uh, that is, uh, I'll turn this over to our town manager, Paul Bachman, who um, has three appointments that he would like to present to the committee for our um, consideration and whether we recommend to the council. Thank you, Andy. Um, so the first person, you have, you have three different committees here and um, these, we're trying to do these as quickly as we can. So you'll see another um, set for some of the same committees coming forward as we do interviews and, and get appointments. So the first one is for the Community Safety and Social Justice Committee. And uh, I'm appointing Dr. Patricia Romney uh, to the committee. Uh, Dr. Romney, I think many people know uh, has been a um, a landmark in our community for decades and has been a leader in many, many uh, areas. She has spent her career since being a, a young person in working for um, civil rights initially and then justice, equity, diversity, and inclusion. Uh, she has done a lot of anti-bias trainings as a professional um, and founder of the Roger Wallace Excellence in Teaching Foundation. Uh, and more recently founded the um, Amherst Neighbors um, Group was one of the founding members of the Amherst Neighbors Group. Um, so it's just a stellar member of our community, which I'm really um, honored that she's put her name forward to serve on this CSSJC. Any uh, questions from members of the committee regarding this recommended appointment? Seeing no requests to uh, those questions, um, without giving any, any details that would be inappropriate, uh, the only question I'd have, Paul, is if you can, at least in appointments, let us know whether there was, you were happy with the number of applicants um, so that we get a sense as to whether you're um, getting uh, the opportunity to make choices or um, not uh so uh, 
Part of it is the number of applicants, but part of it is also when we can schedule people to meet because pulling together someone from the residence advisory committee, the chair of the committee, the staff person, and the applicant is just a gargantuan task that Angela puts an enormous amount of time into. So uh, we, um, we have, for most committees, we have barely enough applicants to serve. Um, and so there is discretion involved, but if someone meets the uh, requirements of the committee chair, um, they tend to get appointed. Okay, that's helpful. No. Um, Athena, do you have a recommended motion? Yes, you. yes, I do. Um, to recommend the town council approve the town manager appointment of Patricia Romney to the Community Safety and Social Justice Committee effective immediately for a term to expire June 30, 2027. I'll make that motion. Is there a second? I'll second. I muted myself as I second. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, motion has been made and seconded, uh, so we'll just quickly go through the vote. Um, Jennifer? Yes. Bob? Yes. <clears throat> um, yes, so it's three to zero with two members absent. Paul, back to you. Thank, the, thank you. Uh, the next one is for the Council on Aging. We have two applicants. Um, this is Helena Donovan from 40 Jeffrey Lane and Fred Holm from 174 Cherry Lane. Uh, Ms. Donovan is, is a user of the Senior Center um, and has... Um, more of a medical background, but like public health medical background, um, and has worked for, has served at volunteer time at the um, flu clinics, uh, but has used the senior center who's interested in getting more involved as she has more time on her hands. Uh, and the, the sort, sort of the same goes for Mr. Holm, who has worked for 35 years, recently retired, um, is very active, um, but also wants to give back to the community. Um, and he has, you know, and these, these are folks who I think are both really good uh, candidates because they've had some access to the senior center, but not a lot. Like they went there, for, uh, Mr. Holm went there for some, uh, he said, for some uh, learn more about Medicare and Social Security, but, and he's glad that it was there, but he didn't, his friends don't know much about it. So these will hopefully, as they learn more, they'll share the information with their, their friend groups as well. So I think these are two very strong additions to the Council on Aging. Yeah, thank you. Any questions from the committee? Seeing no questions, then, Athena, do you have a recommended motion? To recommend the town council approve the town manager appointments of Helena Donovan and Fred Holm to the Council on Aging, effective immediately for terms to expire June 30, 2027. Yeah, I, I will offer I mean, I'll that. make the motion. Okay. <laughs> I'll second. Made the motion. I'll second. And seconded by Bob. Uh, so um, we'll go ahead and proceed to a vote. Um, so Jennifer? Yes. And Bob? Yes. <clears throat> and I'm a yes. So it is again three, zero, two members absent. And Thank you. More, uh, Paul? Yeah. Human Rights Commission. We have two applicant or two appointments. Uh, one is Silas McClung, uh, and he lives on Main Street. He's very new to town, um, and uh, he came to us because he had met with our um, DEI director, uh, Pamela Nolan Young, and uh, um, as he was sort of exploring opportunities with the town, and. Um, so he, she had encouraged, given his background and his interest, um, she had encouraged him to apply to the town to be on the Human Rights Commission. She thought he would be a good member. Uh, he works at Smith College, and his partner um, is a PhD student at um, at at um, UMass. So um, so he's so he'll have a new perspective. I think that isn't really represented on the Human Rights Commission at this point. Uh, and the th second person is someone who's been in town for quite some time is Jay, Jay Pillay um, from 66 Spalding Street. Um, he's an ethnomusicologist who has worked at Hampshire College for a couple decades and um, was what, what he said, the affirmative action representative. I'm not sure if that's a, as a faculty member or what, um, but he, he spoke very eloquently about engaging 
com the community members and his lifelong work of making sure people, underrepresented people, are, have more voice in town government or in, in, in everything. So uh, these are two really good candidates for this. And um, and I, I will say there, there were more applicants, uh, but at this point, we've been getting a lot of um, students who've been applying. Um, I think there are, and it, we we're grateful for Amherst College, especially for encouraging their students to get involved. And their students are always so spectacular. There's already a student um, on the Human Rights Commission for a college student. Uh, we are hoping that one of the seats will be held for a high school student or a uh, hopefully who will head roots that way in our community, not just as a college student. And also, um, you know, we, we try to get college students who are earlier in their college career, not in their last year, just because of continuity. Um, so, so these are the two applicant, the two appointments for this committee. Okay, before going further, I wanted, uh, Council Lord has joined us and, uh, I just want to make sure uh, that she can hear us and we can hear her. Uh, um, yes, I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yes. And uh, we started uh, after calling the meeting to order with public comment. There was no public comment uh, uh, today. Um, and we are now in item three and have uh, had two motions. This is the third um, presentation on uh appointments to committees and um thank you so just to bring you into where we are now um so uh, at this point we had a, uh, the presentation from the town manager does anyone have any questions okay, seeing no questions uh Nina, do you have a motion to recommend the town council approve the town manager appointments to the human rights commission of Silas McClung effective immediately for a term to expire June 30, 2026 and Jandron J. Pillay effective immediately for a term to expire June 30, 2027. I'll make the motion. <clears throat> Is there a second? I'll second. Motion has been made by uh, Bob Hegner and seconded by Jennifer Taub. And uh, I guess we can proceed to a vote. And uh, so we'll go with uh, uh, Jennifer. Yes. Uh, Bob. Yes. Council Lord. Yes. And I'm a yes. So it's four member absent. Well, thank you. Thank you. So. Um, the I'm sorry. Fourth... Yes. I'm, I'm sorry. Oh, I didn't know if Paul, Paul was leaving. I just wanted to ask with the CSSJC appointment with um, Dr. Romney, does that bring them up to a quorum? No, we're inter we're interviewing again tomorrow, I think, for other people who couldn't make it the initial interview. Okay, thank you. But I, want, I, want, you know, be, I wanted to get, as I get them, I'd like to move them forward to, to make this, to make your meeting so I can make the council meeting. Yeah, yep. okay. thank you. Okay, um, so the next agenda item then is the uh, waste hauler program. And there were two subparts to the agenda. Um, and one is the work plan that was presented um, at the last meeting by uh, council, uh, district two counselor, uh, Griesmer and uh, the questions, I think that what we need to do is make sure that we're comfortable with the um, plan as she presented it and want to use it as our work plan and deadline or whether um, there are amendments or changes that people would uh, uh, propose to it. and. Uh, so I had asked that um, this be, uh, I had sent it to members of the committee um, and it is in the packet for people who are looking for it. it. If it's not in today's packet, it is in the packet from the last meeting of the committee, uh, which was what I think September 
13, if I recall. Uh, but in any event, uh, it can be found there. Um, what we're at then is um, the, uh, the town manager would work on a draft for consultant services uh, beginning immediately after the town meeting vote. And um, <clears throat> there was the request that I was placed in it for providing a menu RFP that consultants can uh, bid on parts or all of it. And um, it had a little bit of additional, I'm not going to read it all. And then November, there were two things that were going on. One is that um, that would be when we would hope that the town manager would be able to propose an appropriation request for consultant services um, and to the council. And then second, that um, there would be um, advertisement for, for the consult in, in November with the hope of hiring in December. So I guess the first question that I would pose for Paul is, um, are those reasonable deadlines for those steps? Yes, they are. I, I think, you know, the timing of the appropriation is after we get free cash certified, that's when we, that's why we wait for that to happen. That will have to go um, um, to, you know, the town council, probably refer to the finance committee and then back to town council if that happens quickly enough. And then um, depend, depending how we go through with the hiring for the consultant, what high consultant, there's some consultants who are part of governmental bodies where we can just contract with them. There's others where it would we do an RFP. So it depends which path we chose, choose. I know Guilford's been having lots of conversations with different people who can do this work. So, uh, but in either case, we would bring an appropriation to the council. Yes, yes. It's just a process for procurement that would, might change the timing. Are there any questions uh, for members of the committee or thoughts about those particular pieces of the plan? Uh, Bob? Yeah, I just have a question as to, I mean, we had talked about two consultants, one to sort of do the technical work and the other to do the outreach. And I, you know, it, it seems like we have two consultants on the, on the agenda, on the work plan, but I just want to clarify <clears throat> what we're consulting, you know, what we're hiring for. <clears throat> so what we're talking about right now is just for the, um, uh, the actual technical details of the procurement. I wasn't clear where the council was on educational outreach in terms of whether the council wanted to do it themselves or um, we wanted to bring someone in to help with that. Okay. The previous TSO recommendation and the, the motion that count, uh, the action the council took at the last meeting didn't include a request for consultant services okay. for outreach. So that hasn't been... Um, requested by the council at this point, but TSO could make a recommendation similar to the one they did last time for outreach consultants. Thank you, Jennifer. Yeah, I just wanted to ask, I mean, that would be, that's a big difference in the cost of the contract, right? If someone's doing outreach, I mean, I'd love to see the council be able to do the outreach because um, I'm afraid there may be some sticker shock if all those hours are attached to the consultant who's gonna help draft the RFP. There can be two separate contracts. We don't have to hold one for the other. Okay. Doesn't necessarily have to be the same person either because uh, there may be very different skill set right. involved yeah. with each. Okay. Yeah. That's good to know. Yeah, I personally think that we're going to have to have a consultant. I don't think the council can do it. I mean, I hate to say it, <laughs> but I don't think the council is is equipped to do the level of outreach that I think is needed for this. Um, but that's just my opinion. <laughs> so um, I think the one thing that I would note then is that we are under the November and December date 
advertise consultants singular and hire consultants singular because and that we are clear amongst ourselves and may want to just amend the work plan to make it clear in the work plan that which I that this is for assisting with drafting the RFP that is the consultant that is being referenced in those two points in the timeline. Tina? Did, did you want me to share the, the work plan on screen so that you can edit it now as, as we go or? If you, if it's available and you can. Yeah. Nice to have these. So, um, while we're doing that, I think that we can, uh, I'm not going to go through all of the lists in it in, um, Leave it for the committee if they want to raise, uh, if, if any of you want to raise additional lines. But I want to get us at least to the beginning of the year. So we'll focus on the um, next few lines uh, before I do that. And that is um, the, uh, the next thing after getting to the consultant is that TSO would work with the consultant to recommend preliminary key features to be included in the program. And I think that it's understood that the motion as passed by the council uh, included um, key features also, and that we assume that those are uh, to be included unless, uh, unless we go back to the council. And have reason to suggest a modification either in content or language on those points. Um, but uh, is there any comments on um, the, uh, and, and of course we would be going in January also to the council to actually adopt the key features that are going to be included in the proposal so that would all come together in a single point. Uh, is everyone comfortable with those is, uh, next steps? Jennifer? Um, yeah, I am comfortable with the timeline. I just, so um, we will recommend key f features in the amended bylaw, but then as we get feedback from the community, because that, that's when the outreach is starting after that, we could, if we have to amend or tweak some of the bylaw language, we could do that in response. I, I guess, you know, I just wouldn't want the community to think we've already done the work and then we're asking for their input. Um, I think that the thing that we're talking, uh, trying to get towards is the issuance of the RFP. And, uh, Yeah, I mean, maybe then it is helpful because we're including this in our district meetings. Like you got a lot of feedback from the district one meeting, you know, to, because that will be helpful in drafting the RFP. Yes. And of course, um, until at least the way I look at this is uh, the way that um, Lynn has proposed it is that in January, we would take any comments that we've received by that point, and that would be in the, the place that we as a committee might recommend key features or uh, in, in any uh, thing that modifies the uh, motion as passed by the council. That, that's the point we would have to have kind of a firm deadline for ourselves and let the let the council know that we need their input by that date because the whole goal is to get the RFP issued. Right, I agree. And again, just to 
underscore the importance, even if you're not reaching hundreds of people, maybe just 25 or so through a district meeting, because they happen in every district throughout town. I, Andy and I were at the district one meeting on Sunday, and some of the comments were totally different than what I've gotten in my district because people literally have long driveways in a more rural this in a district with more rural areas. I have no rural areas. So it so I'm just to say that because the district meetings touch people in every kind of you know neighborhood in town, even if there's not a lot of people at each meeting, the the feedback is very helpful. So is there anything more to be said on that? point if not um... Andy Andy is the committee's assumption that the town manager will bring on a separate appropriation request for consultant services for outreach at the same time as the consultant services for the RFP um I think the committee I uh, turn to the committee to see if the committee has comments on that. Uh, Bob? My understanding was the committee hasn't really decided on to hire a consultant to do the outreach, uh, nor has the uh, the council done that. So I think we should we should leave that open for now. Um, and you know we can we can see where we are in December, January timeframe to see whether we need to get somebody for outreach. I mean, the question is how long will it take? Uh, uh, Paul, this may be a question for you. How long will it take to actually get somebody? I mean, if we if we had the money for it and and we had the um, the the RFP for it, um, how quickly could we hire a consultant for to do outreach? <clears throat> probably within 60 to 90 days okay. so that at the outside at the outside yeah so maybe i mean looking if we're going to start in february march if we're going to do a outreach and develop an outreach plan in january then we kind of have to move forward on that don't we uh, if we're going to hire a consultant. Just looking I, at the schedule. Yeah, I mean, I think if you're going, if you if you think the council intends to implement a new trash hauler system, I think you'd, you're wise to engage somebody who's going to help you with a really robust outreach plan. I think what you, we learned at the District 1 meeting is that a lot of people who might not otherwise be engaged in town government will be engaged with this. And I think, you know, our normal tools for reaching out to the public are might not be adequate because this is an all every it you know it's sort of like um, the Valley Green Energy uh, because that effect affected everybody and we had outside support for that and along with everybody else is doing their jobs was as well yeah. and there was a number that people could call if they had questions and things like that. So is it your recommendation, Bob, that we make a decision today or? It, uh, I mean, it, a, 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 or soon about whether we want the additional consultant. Soon. I mean, George, with, you know, I think we should have George give a, George a, an opportunity to weigh in on this because uh, it is a it is a big ask um, and it will involve, you know, some some funding <clears throat> but yes we should we should we should make a decision soon because i think you know if it's 60 to 90 days to hire somebody you know and we want to start working on you know a a a um outreach plan in january uh then we we need to get somebody hired soon you know, we need to start the process. So I'm I'm also thinking about the timeline for council act, uh, TSO recommendation, council action, and then finance committee needs to review and recommend any appropriation requests before the council can act on it. So all of those pieces need to come together before we have an appropriation. Um, so just looking ahead 
if the committee waits until the 10th, then you can make a recommendation to the council for action on the 21st of October. Um, and then finance committee will need to, uh, Paul will need to create an appropriation request that will probably come to the council for the fourth. The finance committee needs to review and we need to hold a public forum. The earliest council might act on those is November 18 or December 2. So I'm just, you know, thinking ahead about how all those pieces come together and when. So do you think that we would need to make uh, a decision by the October 10, our October 10 meeting? Paul's nodding. I think, I think so. I think that makes <laughs> sense. Yeah, I think that makes sense. So we should probably make sure that we have that listed as something that we plan to do for October 10. Jennifer? Yeah, no, it just sounds like the um, the soonest we could have the consultant retained would probably be late February, March. So I agree with what Bob said about getting, you know, when you work backwards, because if it takes 60 to 90 days and, you know, the holidays will be coming that we may not have a consultant on retained if we go that way, if we get the appropriation um, in, until almost the spring. So yeah, it does seem like working backwards, we have to move on this quickly. As far as uh, Councillor Ryan is uh, um, in his participation, my recollection is, is that he is not gonna be back in, uh, back from his uh, trip on October 10, but he is uncertain as to whether he could participate uh, at least as of the last conversation in the October 10 meeting from where he is, and uh, we can check with them. <clears throat> but let's uh, put it in for October 10th as uh, what we uh, a goal. So other than that, I'm not going to go through line for line. I wanted to make sure that we had the first steps um, at least uh, agreement on them. Uh, and then the last question I'm going to ask uh, for the rest of you is, we can do one of two things with this. And what, that is, uh, we could do it by motion, or we could just leave it as it has been, that it's up to the chair to work with the uh, clerk of the council to keep this uh, work plan current uh, by our discussion without motion. So it's up to the committee as to how they want to proceed. Anybody who wants to do it by motion should uh, speak up and uh, make a motion as appropriate. I don't see any requests recognition on this point. Uh, so I think we're going to leave it where it is now. Not going to make any, thank you, Athena. We're not going to make any further changes, but keep an eye on it yourselves as we go along. Uh, we're going to try and keep the updated version of for the committee and the public. Uh, as we proceed. Uh, and uh, so if you have uh, suggestions at any time, don't hesitate to make them to me and then I can get it on to the agenda for a meeting so that we can keep this moving going forward. And same thing goes for uh, uh, any of our staff who are present, Paul Guilford or Athena, if any of you have recommendations, you should do the same thing because we want to make this work for all of us. And this is just a, a way of trying to um, keep us on track. And I think that's, uh, you know, Lynn was uh, on board with that and uh, she might be putting council meeting, thinking council meeting dates in there too, as might Athena and Paul. So the other part of this was outreach 
think that the one thing that I wanted to share in an observation, then Jennifer was also there at the meeting. I think that my uh, concern as I listened to some of the comments was that um, the PowerPoint that was used at the beginning uh, by the district counselors to present uh, was built upon uh, the, what was presented to the council. And so it did not touch on sort of the underlying environmental issues. There was no presentation made to the um, participants in the district one meeting about uh, the, why we need to reduce rate waste going to landfills and um, what the environmental impact is of compost and um, compost going into landfills. And there was very little about um, the uh, question of so why you would go to uh, a competitive bid process it was sort of assumed that it would be with the hope of reducing cost, but it didn't say that. And uh, so I, I just wanted to share that observation as you looked at it. But um, was anybody surprised uh, by any of the um, questions and comments that were placed on there? And uh, I should, for the, for the record, I want to note that uh, I shared this uh, draft form before putting it in the packet with uh, Councilor Shane and uh, Councilor Ate, and Councilor Shane did respond and uh, said that uh, she was uh, in agreement with uh, what I presented to the committee. Jennifer? Um, yeah, I mean, I, I was the, we were offered a, um, a very helpful level of detail. I think in some of the responses, uh, comments made by residents, you know, and again, because it's, a, there are rural portions of the district that it sounds like a number of residents have the, I think it's called the concierge service with USA, where the trucks go up the driveway, particularly for elderly residents, you know, they really can't bring the cans out to the curb. Um, so that's, I mean, it, it, there were a number of suggestions like that for what needs to be included um, in what's requested, like that service option should be part of what's in the um, RFP. I every In every discussion with residents, there are many people who are, ex I think what concerns them the most is that we might not continue to have the transfer station. They always ask that question. And my takeaway is that that just has to be a part of the new program, that we have to be able to assure residents who currently use the transfer station that they can continue to do so. Otherwise, the program, I think, feels like a net loss rather than gain to them. There's one piece of information that we won't know without uh, the RFP process having both options in there. And I don't know if that's possible or not. I think the consultant would need to tell us uh, whether it's a lot, it's, it's, we're capable of doing it. But do would a um, hauler uh, come up with a different bid based upon whether or not there's th uh, this alternative service, um, alternative means of uh, disposing of trash because it would reduce the number of households that they would uh, be picking up from. And uh, so are we, uh, we don't know the answer to the, a lot of the questions, Paul? Yeah, almost all these things will impact the quote, obviously, I think. But I think the key thing is for the council to decide what it wants. And that's what we go out, put in the RFP. If you say we want the transfer station to remain open, that goes into the to the RFP. So all the bidders know that it um, that it is. I mean, you could say with transfer open, but the more variations you put in there, the more we should just say the council should say what it wants and then go out to bid for that, I think. 
because we've already done the RFI to collect information. We're at we're at actually awarding a bid option now. And I think that's the goal of the conversation. When the consultant gets on, they will frame all those questions for you, and then you'll have to answer those questions. Jennifer? I, I did also want to add, I agree with you that in the presentation to the at district meetings or any of the pu you know, public and outreach sessions, it should, part of the introduction should be the reason that we're doing this, that, that it's to help achieve our climate action goals. So it's, if it's not clear, you know, we're not just changing something for the sake of changing it, that there's, um, that, that we have a serious, that are, we have very serious reasons for wanting to do that. And that's to reduce trash and organic material that goes into the waste stream. Because we think that's clear, but it may not be. Yeah. Um... Did you think it was clear to the uh, residents of District 1 in, in the one District 5 resident who was there? Is my thought was that it was not. And we could just pass that along to the rest of the districts as experience learned. Let's put it that way. So um, I think that where we are with outreach is that we're still uh, trying to encourage uh, district meetings uh, to be in the initial outreach that we're going to do. We're going to um, be trying to make a decision as to whether we are going to ask for a second consultant to assist us with the outreach later in the process. And uh, I don't know if there's anything else that people want to say about outreach. Now, right now, I guess the last thing I would ask is if in either today or at any other time, if you think of other venues or meetings or places where we might be able to do outreach at this early stage, it would be helpful to know that uh, we should pursue that. So, you know, if you think of things, it doesn't have to be today's meeting. Please uh, come up with it. And we might ask the council and the, our report just if they have ideas to send them to the committee. So is there anything else to be said on the... Uh, the subject of uh, the waste taller is if not um, next item um, on the agenda in the in the last one that I absolutely want to get to today. Um, even if we do a short, decide to do a shortened meeting, um, is the uh, question of how we're going to proceed with considering the town manager's recommendation to establish a transportation and parking commission. And at the last meeting, uh, we talked about it. And we're going to focus on the charge. And we asked Councillor Ryan to um, put his suggestions that he started to formulate at the meeting into a memorandum, which is in the packet for today's meeting. and. Uh, so I wanted to uh, see, see what the reaction is from other members of the committee to what Councillor Ryan submitted to us, both as a process and the listing of uh, very um, issues that he uh, included in his memorandum. So another any comments at this point on what he provided to us? Jennifer? Um, I, I think he did a really a good job. It's uh, It seems to cover all the points. I liked his suggestion that the members of TSO take different topics to present on so that 
you know, you and George aren't um, <laughs> carrying the full load. So I thought that was a good suggestion. Any other comments to offer in this? Uh... Paul? Yeah, I, I mean, I'm a member of the committee, but I think that's a, it's a really good way to approach it, to segment it up, that you focus on each topic. And I think you do a couple topics every meeting. I think that's his intent. Um, and I think it really can focus the conversation. And then it gives you time also to consider it at the next meeting as you talk about the, the different parts. And uh, so I think he did a really nice job of segmenting what the questions were especially the reason why are we doing this? Yeah, that's an important first conversation. Which gets back to the purpose and uh, I guess the uh, question that I would have is uh, I'll contact, I'll try and contact uh, Councilor Ryan and see if he is going to be available for the October 10 meeting. If he is, um, would there be agreement to uh, at least take up the purpose questions at that meeting? Yeah. And I'm seeing two people, three people saying nodding heads yes. Um, and of course, the, the, fl the flip side of that question is, uh, should we, if he's not going to be available, should we hold off and... Uh, delayed by one meeting and uh, Jennifer thinks so we should. Jennifer? Yes, I do think that uh, Council Ryan should be involved in the next conversation. So if we have to wait another, till another meeting, I, you know, that's what we'll have to do. Bob? Well, <clears throat> what's the uh, time frame for establishing this commission if we do do so? I mean, is it next spring, next summer? I mean, yeah, th there's there's no. It's when you when you decide to do it. If you decide to do it, it can be implemented at any time. Okay. Um, yeah. So I, I do then. You know, definitely, since we're not under a particular time pressure, we should get George. I think George would be very helpful to be part of the conversation and on um, uh we were directed by the council to report back i think it was an october date but that's for report it doesn't have to be final action uh, which is another subject that i think we should always be aware of because there were two referrals made at the last meeting that had a December date for uh, a uh, report back to the council. But on those, and particularly on the uh, uh, Southeast Street uh, proposal, which we had some discussion about at the council meeting, it'd be really helpful for uh, Paul and Guilford to let us know what whether there's a deadline by which uh, we need to have um, serious council approval of the process because we need to build that into our work schedule. So uh, I don't know if you have an answer to it now, but uh, if, but Bill, if first, not, you know. I really, I really don't know. I mean, mm -hmm. having a process in place for the public is probably the driving factor for making this change the most. I mean, the most, I mean, people want to know how you do things and people want a group that you can take something to and actually get things resolved. Oh, so we're on the, we're on the next topic. We're on the Southeast oh. street, the roundabouts. And, oh, sorry. You know, and the UMass signs, are there deadlines for those two? <laughs> no, it's no deadlines for UMass signs roundabout. Um, to tell the truth, um, the sooner the better. Um, every everything we if we hold off, it just puts the project farther behind, and then there needs to be a discussion. I think about the 
contingency money and the underbid money, uh, they both kind of now make up a contingency. Uh, if, if that money is going to be used before the project's complete or it's going to be waiting until after the project's complete, then that kind of sets the stage too. If you're going to wait until after the project's complete, you don't have really a timeline you have to hold to getting it designed. I that think that from the yeah from the building committee's point of view, holding off until after the project's complete creates issues. So they'd rather have it being done concurrently with the completion of the project, if at all possible. It's hard to co you know align those things, I think. Um, well, that was what my thought was too, but Jennifer. Yeah, that's what I would ask. So they would actually be doing the road construction while the school is being built? If you want to do that, then you have to start like yesterday. So, so we're not talking about, that's how I interpreted what Paul just said, but that well, you were they, meaning that it would, the construction would be going on at the same time, just that the, the, they would want to know what the plan is for Southeast Street. It's, I'm just asking for clarification on that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think if we wanted to coincide with the opening or, or as closest to the opening of the school, then a decision soon, as soon as possible is important. Um, if there's anything that's going to change, if the council says we don't like this design, we want a different design, and it changes any of the interior internal circulation of the school, like the driveway configuration, we need to know that even sooner, basically. So I think a read on getting whether yeah I think that that's this is a higher priority one, um, but the UMass science might be a relatively quick one. I'm not sure how that it, how the council's looking at that. Yeah, I I agree that that's not as complicated an issue uh, set of issues. I would think that we need to move fairly quickly to start this conversation because there could be questions that come up that are going to require uh, investigation and, uh, mm -hmm. you know, Gilford and Jason and others who are involved in this process may need to provide input and it may not be input that can be provided on the spot. I can give two examples. Um, one that, that sort of came up in the discussion a little bit. One is uh, any changes that might be made on the piece of Belchertown Road that's the one way that goes around the bank and um, access to the bank uh, and what complications that adds to the to what we're doing and the same thing is the issue that was raised about Cumberland Farms and um, how it what what we might do there and uh, there are uh, things that I just don't know the answer to uh, and I don't know that I would expect anyone else to know the answer to now for example um, that uh, uh, exit from Cumberland Farm that goes out to Southeast Street. Um, can that be made one way? Um, do we have the right to do that? Um, well, and... If we go with the roundabout configuration, the, the Southeast Street entrance to Cumberland Farms becomes an in only for coming on Southeast North. If you're going North on Southeast Street, you can turn into it. And when you leave, you have to turn out of it and go north as well. You won't be able to cross the, there'll be an island there and you more than likely will not be able to cross it. So that would, uh, we would essentially answer the question for Cumberland Farms that we would tell them that it is essentially a one way. Yes. The, I, it was actually not recommended to put that that entrance in when the Cumberland Farms built it, but it was um, it was done anyway. It was decided it needed to be have something. Did the planning board uh, take up that issue when they uh, approved the plan? Or um, I know in our comments we didn't really we did not support having that entrance there, but I don't know if the planning board took it farther from there. But so, but that's what it, right now, if we do this, um, you're going to have to cut off left turns 
into Cumberland Farms and out of Cumberland Farms at that driveway. Jennifer? Um, yeah, so what you're saying is, Guilford, you'd make a right and go around the traffic circle to go south on Southeast Street. Correct. Um, so could we have a situation where the new school opens and there's all this construction going on in front of it? Or we do we want to have it finish before or start it? I don't know. Well, the, the goal is always not to inconvenience people as much as possible. So if you take that goal, then the goal would be to have everything done so that it wasn't a, an issue. But that probably, that probably is not the world we live in. So, so how would you literally get into the school if it's under construction? The roundabouts are under construction? Yeah. There would have to be some way of, we would have to stop basically construction, let people in the school, work around them, and then let them out at the end of the day. So you, you just make the project longer and more complicated for the construct contractor. So I th it sounds like we really need to... Uh make this a high priority item for the committee to move forward with. That's what I was trying to make sure we came out of today's meeting understanding, which is why I listed it on the agenda. Paul? Yeah, I th I, th I agree with that. And I, th I just wanted to say to Jennifer that there's always going to be, even if there were no school there, this construction is going to be complicated and impede traffic patterns we're seeing it on route nine we've seen it all on route nine through hadley so that's the that's the world guilford lives in is working in front of everybody when they're trying to get through you so as we do agenda planning uh for our committee i think that our tendon what we're coming to is that this needs to be a high priority item and we need to uh, be working on it in meetings this year. This cannot wait. Bob? Yeah, I agree that we need to move on this. I would suggest, however, that there's some information that we, we need to have in order to move forward. One is, uh, in particular, the, the, the pedestrian situation and the biking situation with kids and where they're gonna cross and how they're gonna cross and all that. Um, with four um, roundabouts, it complicates things. Um, you can't just, you know, right now at the corner of Easton and whatever college, uh, the, there's a, there's a you can press a button and stop traffic in all directions and, and walk across the street. Um, that won't, I don't know if that'll be possible with, with roundabouts or not. Um, whether we can put lights on the roundabouts or whatever, but I mean, it's a, it could be a problem. And I think we just need to have clarity as to how we're going to deal with the students, the kids walking across the street um, and kids biking. So it's true on main street. Yeah. But to tell the truth, we're not going to know how we're not going to know pedestrian flow until we know traffic flow. I hate to say it that way, but you need to lay out the route the cars are going to go, and then we can come back and lay out the route the pedestrian is going to go and how we accommodate them. Which is another reason to move this quickly. So the way that we set agendas um, is uh, usually it and on a case, you know, it's not on a regular for every meeting, but Paul and Athena and George and I um, do have a conversation about agenda planning in sort of blocks of meetings. And I think that we need to uh, just take this into account. And that, is there any other questions that committee members want to raise about uh, the issues on Southeast Street? 
mean, I have things that I thought about, but I'm not sure that they really are more appropriate to uh, wait. Uh, but it all, ultimately, I mean, the questions will be along the lines, and I think that there's not going to be a surprise to any of them as how big do we have to make the traffic circles in order to um, allow school bus flow, for example, getting into the school bus entrance, and how much of the uh, common on the other side might get lost to make the traffic circle large enough for those purposes, those kinds of things uh, will come up as questions, but uh, I, don't think, I don't think we're ready for that yet. Anything else that anyone wants to raise at this point? Um, Jennifer. Well, I just wanted to ask, when would <clears throat> um, TAC be asked to possibly weigh in? I would, uh, I, I was going to actually try and contact Tracy after today's meeting and before the next TAC meeting, uh, just to let her know where things were at on issues that are concerned to them. Uh, you know, we sort of were dealing with, we, we have to work with TAC as it is currently structured until we make a decision on restructuring to the commission as recommended. Uh, and I uh, would think that uh, if we're going to move this so we could start the discussion before we could possibly make a recommendation on the idea of creating the uh, Traffic and Parking Commission, then we have to uh, attack as it's currently structured, Paul. Yeah, I just as we can as you consider this, it, um, it's going to be a very complex project with a lot of questions. A lot of uh, can you look into this? Can you look into that? I really want to minimize the number of committees that our staff have to attend. Like if you are sending it to DAAC, which you often do, and to TAC, that's another ser series of meetings. It's not just one meeting. Typically, it's a series of meetings. So I'm wondering if. The TSO can be almost a convener and have the conversations happen in one location. Maybe it's more efficient. Guilford can weigh in on this, whether it's better to go independently to the committees out of respect for the committees. But, um, you know, I, I do worry about an, this becoming an all-consuming thing for our town staff as we try to bring it forward, because you're going to have 100 questions TAC will have 100 questions, and each one of these is a one- to two-hour meeting and you know, tech meets at the end of the day. So I just hope you'll take that into consideration. Yeah, I mean, the problem I think that we've got with that is, uh, and I'll speak on each committee real quickly, uh, tech has a number of people who are unavailable to meet until the end of the day, which is why they meet we would have to make the decision if we're going to do uh, do combined meetings as to whether we have the flexibility to go to the end of the day to uh, work with TAC and the combined meeting for this purpose. Uh, the other question is uh, just TAC get into more detail and do they work through things in more detail that shorten the time for this committee. And uh, as far as DAC is concerned, I think that it's a question as much of uh, respect for the for the that community that they represent and uh, trying to accommodate them by letting them be uh, heard. I think that uh, having them own their own meetings is, is, is a sensitivity issue we have to talk about. But uh, 
Paul, why don't we take this up with the next agenda discussion where we talk about uh, agenda when, when we can have George present and uh, take it up there. Okay. Bob? Yeah, I just wanted to say I'd be willing to meet um, with, uh, you know, jointly with TAC and, and, and DAC, um, you know, as, as uh, you know, we could hold a special meeting of the committee. I'm, I'm willing to do that um, if that if it means moving this forward and, and being efficient with everyone's time. Jennifer? I concur with Bob, that's all I wanted to say. Yeah, having been um, liaison at some point in my life to both committees, um, I have a lot of respect for both committees. They have very different uh, sets of priorities. And uh, if you start putting it all together, um, it may make for a very long meeting. And I think that's the other thing to consider. And Guilford has probably been to all of those meetings or uh, might have similar thoughts or our thoughts along that issue as to whether it would make for a very long meeting, but we'd learn something from them, but they have very different perspectives. Uh, is there anything that people want to... Um, Raise that we can alert UMass to as far as questions for them or questions that we want to ask of our uh, of Guilford or Paul regarding the sign proposal that you know of now. Because I think that what we just have to do is uh, pick the meeting date for a meeting and uh, alert. Uh, appropriate staff at UMass of that date and uh, uh, just take up the issues then, but uh, might be worthwhile for you to each, every, all members of the committee <clears throat> to just try and study that material a little bit more. I need to also uh, uh, take part in that too to make sure that I have a complete list of questions because that was a complicated proposal, but um, I don't think it, it uh, is one that we need to prolong. I think we can try and do it in one meeting. So as we're prepared. So anything right now about it? Um, I would have one thing. I, I would ask you, Mass, to give you the whole plan what you got was just the plan for um, town ways. And there was a lot of questions in the council meeting about how it, you know, it didn't seem right. But if you actually see the whole plan, you see how those all those pieces fit in with the entire sign plan they're doing. And it makes sense. They just gave you the pieces that are in the town way. And it doesn't raise questions. Well, why is the sign here? Why is the sign here? If you see the whole plan, you see how they laid them all out and how they're doing it. So it makes much more sense to see the whole thing, which is what we saw. Um, and we've worked out all our issues with it. Um, but there are there were some questions that came up because you don't know what the other signs are that UMass is installing on their property. So you should ask for that before you schedule them for the meeting and let them explain the whole plan to you and how it all fits. It's a good suggestion. I assume that the sign that is on um, East Pleasant Street near the uh, police station. There's a sign that looks like the ones that they present. That that's a preliminary version. And for anybody who wants to go see a sign that is like what they're proposing to put in other locations, that's one where you can actually see it already. Jennifer. Just a bit of editorializing. This is one item I would happily designate to the Parking and Traffic Commission. <laughs> I feel like if Guilford's good with it and UMass is good with it, I don't have anything to add.
It's uh, I can think of others. I've already spoken up about how much I'd like to give give away poll hearings. Oh, I love poll hearings. You love poll hearings. I want to say I want to venture as to what that means. Um, so, is there anything else that we need to talk about today? Not, I can. We can do the minutes, and uh, as far as future meeting schedules and agendas, I just want to remind you that the dates in our schedule are October tenth, October twenty fourth, November seven, November fourteen. December 5 and December 12. And so I will be working with uh, Dina and Paul and George is um, to try and uh, fill out a plan for all of those meetings so that we can uh, have a, a plan for moving forward. And uh, if any of you have any thoughts about what you'd like to see on any of those agendas or how what your recommendations are for structure of the agendas that we would propose, um, you know, please send them along. Um, if nothing else, um, is there, are there any comments on the, uh, uh, the, the minutes for September 12, 2024, which were in the packet for today's meeting? Is there a, I'll make a motion then to approve the minutes as submitted. Is there a second? Second. Yes, uh, Jennifer Bob. seconded. Uh, going for then to a vote since there was no request for comments. Uh, Bob? Yes. Jennifer? Yes. Council Lord? Yes. Uh, okay. Um, and I'm a yes. So it's four to zero with one member absent. Um, is there anything else that uh, members of the committee would like to raise that was not the, the, that I did not anticipate 48 hours in advance? Uh, if not, is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. Uh, Okay, it's been moved uh, by Bob, seconded by Jennifer. Uh, we'll just vote Bob. Yes. Jennifer. Yes. Council Lord. Oh, yes. And I'm a yes. So it's four to zero, and uh, we've done a good job. We've made it in essentially in an hour and 15 minutes, uh, well under our two hour gap. So, uh, uh, See you all next opportunity. Yeah. Thank you. Thank Thanks, you. everyone. Thanks.